Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSR, HealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSR, HealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. We think pretty is pretty important in all things in beauty. Welcome to Radio A and B, where we are designed uh, a program to help people live a long and vibrant life. I'm Patty Smucker, a licensed cosmetologist, and I've been in the industry for about 40 years. Here at Radio A and B, um, we try and tell the secrets behind the making of health and beauty products. Our sponsor today is the American Influencer Awards, and uh, we the American Influencer role is playing a major role in connecting consumers to brands and giving consumers a way to speak with brands so that uh, brands can uh, design their products in such a way that they're able to really make a difference. Uh, the American Influencer uh, Awards is currently opened up right now so that you can go in and make a nomination for your favorite influencer. Uh, you can go to AIAAward.com and vote for your favorite influencer. Uh, and the actual program will take place, uh, the award program takes place on November the 18th in Los Angeles. Actually, it'll be in Santa Monica at Barker Center. We've just announced that. Uh, and you can see the your influencers and the way that um, they're providing a great benefit uh, to influencers and keeping beauty moving. So that's the American Influencer Awards. Today is a show dedicated to sharing with you some cool finds, whether it's attending a show or discovering people who are finding their voice in social. My team here at American Made Beauty is always on the lookout for brands that we think are doing something special. At the top of the show, we will meet Alisa Cho, who is, uh, with her husband Jay, started a cool little brand called Bonblicity. You'll see Alisa was, was working as a dental hygienist that demanded hand washing dozens of times every day. Unfortunately, squeaky clean hands often become painfully dry that lotion simply can't tame. You'll learn how she turned an opportunity into, or a problem into an opportunity by uh, developing bomblicity. At the bottom of the hour, we're going to um, meet a an influencer uh, that has been uh, successful in turning his experiences uh, into a successful social media uh, following. Uh, J R L Artiste is a celebrity makeup artist, and so stay with us so you can learn a little bit about how he has been refining his brand and um, making things happen. So welcome now. Elise Cho, um, we're delighted to have you with us today. Hi, Patty. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, um, Elisa, tell us a little bit about your background and how you moved from hygienist to beauty brand owner. Okay. Well, I am still a uh, a registered dental hygienist by trade, still working two days a week. Um, It pretty much uh, came about from me not being much of a lotion person because I never um, felt clean. I always felt sticky and dirty, and I hated that feeling, especially when I was wearing gloves for work. So, um, you know, working in a field where washing your hands multiple times a day really dried out my hands, I needed something that would really help my dry, chapped skin. Uh I needed something that was going to last me through multiple hand washes, unlike lotion that just washes off right away every time. So um, being that I love beauty products and um, always looking for something um, to buy, mm-hmm. uh, my, my search naturally started um, looking in that uh, category rather than looking for a drug of some sort. So I had found a lot of products that claimed to um, relieve my symptoms, but I felt that the results were really temporary. I mean, literally sometimes um, just minutes at most. Mm-hmm. So um, what I did is I just... Um, you know, worked, uh, thankful for Google. We just searched the internet to find something, what, um, some kind of product or ingredient that would actually help stay with me, um, through several hand washes. 
So I wanted something that was multitasking, um, something that could exfoliate, because I had dry, flaky skin. So I think something that could exfoliate and condition everything in a single step. But most importantly, I wanted something that we could take to work and that I would, um, that it wouldn't be a sanitary issue and that I wouldn't be wasting precious price but throwing, you know, needing to throw things away. Um, and then I, of course, wanted something that was pretty clean and um, used natural ingredients. And so what was the what was the process for you? Certainly, I understood the need as far as your hands were dry, you weren't able to, uh, wanted something that was going to stay with you. But where from being involved in the medical industry, how did it come to you that you could actually physically make a product? Um, you know, I don't think I was looking at it from that standpoint. Um, I was just... I. Around this time, about six, this is about seven years ago, where um, there was a lot of, I started to run into a lot of um, products that people were making at home, and I didn't, it just opened my eyes to this whole new world of handmade products. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like I said, thank goodness for the internet, I just spent a lot of time researching to see how people were, um, you know, what kind of ingredients were really, um, you know, natural and um, just beneficial to our skin. And um, I enjoy cooking and creating new foods or new uh, recipes. So mm-hmm. this kind of came naturally to me to just look at all the different ingredients and try to make my own little combination of something that would work for me. Right. It was never, I never thought of it as a business idea. Um, it was just something for me to play around with. And, um, we, you know, my husband thought it was a really great idea, and we started to look into doing some of these little um, events, like little shopping events and things, and that's kind of how we ended up making it into a business. And so um, today, tell us, what what is Bondblicity today? So um, we started about six and a half years ago in our home kitchen. Um, as I mentioned, we did, you know, start to sell our product at some, you know, girls' shopping events um, as vendors. Um, we did demos of our product at the table so that people could try it right there and then and um, get the results right away. So, um, you know, I was doing this while we were, I was still working full time. My husband was um, had a business of his own at that time and he was working full time as well. Um, but, you know, we would work four or five days a week and then every weekend we would be out somewhere, um, you know, standing 12 to 14 hours. <laughs> Um, just introducing our products, but the feedback we were getting is really what kept us going. It was, um, you know, it doesn't matter how tired you were, you, know, you just get that rush of just pride and joy of hearing all the, you know, great feedback that we kept getting. And um, and as it, you know, went along, we started to have um, people that attend these events. They were business owners. Some might have had a, like a gift shop or a, a, a beauty salon or something. And they would start asking us if we did wholesale. Mm-hmm. And we really didn't know what that meant. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, okay, well, wholesale means discount, but what kind of discount are we looking at? Or what kind of quantities are we looking at? So we really didn't know what that meant. Um, so we started looking into what doing wholesale was uh, about. And um, we decided that we would try to take our business into that route. And uh, we started to search for more events to reach a wider um Customer base, we discovered the nail and spa industry, which was a big thing for us. <laughs> uh-huh. And so, um, one of the things that we do at our uh, events when we do a, a trade show or a, or a consumer show is that we let our customers experience our product. Um, they feel the results right away. Um, the colors and the, the packaging of our brand is, um, I think, what initially draws the people's attention to our booth. Mm-hmm. Everything looks pretty, it smells pretty, and it makes you feel pretty after you use it. And all of these things get them really excited to make that purchase. So um, knowing that the experience is really important, we decided that um, marketing our products to the spa and nail industry would be ideal because then they have the opportunity to use them in their services to introduce the product to their clients. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, it was an, it was easier than just having the product sit on, on the shelf because it's not something that's a common product out there so people could easily overlook it or 
they don't really get what they're looking at. So, you know, if you don't catch their attention the first couple of seconds, then, you know, you've lost that. So um, working with all the retail spa um, partners that we've um, built up over the years, um, the ones that have been able to incorporate the, incorporate our products into their services or, you know, even just sampling them um, are the ones that have been doing really well with um, selling our products um, as a retail product as well. Right. So, and right now we currently have several hundred spas, nail salons, um, that you know, throughout the U.S. Um, as our retail partners, and we do anticipate that that number will grow, and uh, we're hoping to expand into other countries uh, within the next couple of years. So from the standpoint in which you were just making it in your kitchen, um, there's obviously been a, a fairly significant leap from that point to where you are now. Tell us about the process going from making it in your kitchen to actually moving into a, uh, a qualified uh, manufacturing facility. Sure. So, um, in the, so we had been doing the events for maybe about six months. Uh-huh. Um, and... Um, I think around the sixth month is when we did the Las Vegas, uh, one of the spa shows in Las Vegas. And up to that point, we were making it from home. And when we got back from the show, we had all these orders that we had to get out. And it was like our home was just a mess. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we had no more place to stock things. You know, we had to buy a bunch of boxes and more packaging material. And uh, we just decided that, you know, we needed to um, we needed to move out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we needed to take the business into its own space. Right. So you know, we didn't know how um, quickly we would grow. We didn't know how um, you know if this was going to be a consistent type of um, you know flow of business. So we didn't want to make too big of a leap. So we um, ended up renting an office space. It was literally like a little office space. No. Um, no, um, like, kitchen or anything where we could um, put a, a big sink in. So um, we made, you know, a small suite. It was about, I want to say, 250-square-foot space um, work for us, and that lasted about a year. Mm-hmm. And at that point, and, and we were on the second floor, and we had no elevators, so there was a lot of lugging things up and down. This wow, place. right, right. Um, but you know what? For what we were able to afford and not knowing where we were going with this business, we had to just make do with what we could. So uh-huh. um, at that point, about a year after um, our our first commercial space, we went into a, a larger facility, which was about you know, 600,000 square feet, and we thought it was huge, and what are we going to do with all this space? And uh, we were able to put in a custom, uh, like a, made a custom kind of kitchen where we would work out putting commercial sinks and tables to work, um, to do the production in. And um, luckily we were in a bigger business complex where they have multiple size suites. And um, I think about a year and a half into that, we have now moved up to a space about just under 2,000 square feet. So we're still a small business. Um, but um, one of the reasons we had to make that bigger leap is because we ended up with a fairly large private label account, and we've been they've been working with us for almost three years now. And um, when you're getting orders for 300,000 pieces or units, um, there's a lot of storage space that we need just to store raw ingredients and packaging material and pallets as we're, you know, product producing. And um, so we really need to that additional space, not just for them, but it made us more efficient. That was the biggest thing is just making our business more efficient. Right. And so you, and, and again, so Bomblicity today is a, a line of um, bath bombs and, and, and products. Tell us specifically about the product. Yeah, so um, we actually started off with a, a variety of products. We had our candy scrubs, which was kind of our main thing. But I felt like I needed more than just the candy scrubs, so we started to make bath bombs and bath salts, and um, I made handmade soaps. And those are the items that we first started selling. But what we found was that it was our scrubs that was making, um, you know, that people were noticing. The other things didn't matter. The mm-hmm. other things was 
just time consuming. You know, it was more things that we had to make and have inventory. We had uh, the ingredients were expensive, and because we weren't selling as much of those, I had to buy them in a, you know, not, uh, it was in a smaller quantity, so I was paying more for them. So we decided, forget everything else, let's just stick to the candy scrubs. And they're basically little solid sugar and salt scrubs that are wrapped like candy. And, um, and so we just, you know, went full, full blast with just those, just that item. And as we were, um, becoming a little more popular with the, the crowd, um, they were asking us if they can use these as a body scrub. And I said, well, yeah, you can, but you have to use so many of them. It's kind of expensive. Uh huh. So, um, brainstorming, we said, how can we make this into a body scrub? And so we ended up, um, coming up with one that looked like chocolate. And it was I, it's basically the same thing. It's just a bigger um, form and, and size. And um, and what I really liked about our body scrubs, which we call body truffles, they look like chocolate, um, is that you use it once, once or twice, and you're done with it. You don't have to worry about what's growing in my jar. Um, I can take one to the gym and have a real, you know, shower after the gym before work, or I can take a couple on my vacation without liquids at the airport. So, um you know, I realized all of that after I came up with the product wasn't what I was going for when I first made it. So right. It was kind of cool that there was a bunch of other benefits and perks of um, the way that we ended up packaging. Um, you know, there was a lot of pros that came with it that we hadn't planned on. <laughs> right, right. That's great. And so, um, and what I really like, and this is what, you know, sort of caught my attention, is the fact that it does, it sort of, it catches your eye. You're at a beauty show and you're, you're looking for, um, you know, you're, you get lost in sort of the sea of all of these various different things that are, that are there. And then, boom, all of a sudden you find something that looks and feels different, but it literally does look like candy. Um, and they, but one of the things I think that's very unique about it is that when you wash wash your hands with it, um, there is a, it's not a coating, but there's definitely a longer-term hydration. Tell us a little bit about how that works. Yeah, so um, the way that our product works is um, because it's an oil-based product, it actually stays with you. It doesn't just wash right off. And so uh, we use this great blend of different butters and oils, and they're uh, mostly cocoa, shea, and avocado butter. We've got some macadamia oil in there and vitamin E. But um, basically all of these ingredients um, are known to um, emol- um, to hydrate and protect your skin. So, for example, cocoa butter, uh, which people usually um, uh, think of um, – it being used for like um, stretch marks, preventing or removing stretch marks, but um, the emollient properties go way beyond that. Um, it's a natural antioxidant. It can heal the skin from the inside out. It's really um, easily absorbed by the skin, and it can maintain on the skin for hours by leaving a protective barrier to lock in moisture. So that's why when you wash your hands again after you've already used our product, you'll feel a waxy sensation, and that's because. It's like, I guess, kind of like being with your car being waxed. Um, it leaves that protective barrier. And shea butter, which is packed with vitamin E, it helps with the skin's natural collagen protection. So that also protects and nourishes the skin from, um, from you know, prevent drying. And over time, it can help reduce with wrinkles and dryness and, and it's the scaly and itchy skin that can be associated with um, dermatitis. Mm-hmm. And as you went into uh, actually making them uh, in a commercial kitchen and, you know, being a, moving out of the house, was there some different things that you did with regards to the manufacturing uh, in terms of the preservative system uh, to make them last longer? Yeah, so um, first of all, we took, um, uh, you know, I, put, I um, ended up finding this great consulting business for small entrepreneurs and makers like myself. And um, we were able to take several classes. I, you know, learned how to, um, you know, creating line sheets and, you know, talking to wholesale people. And and more importantly, we took GMP courses, um, which, you know, helps with our, you know, to make sure that we're in compliance with, you know, any kind of FDA regulations and things like that. So we wanted to be able to safely make our products and be able to recall them if um, needed to. So record keeping is really important to us. 
Um, but and and for our audience, GMP is good manufacturing practices. Good so manufacturing, and, and I and I and I think this is an important topic because I oftentimes I, I actually was just at a local mall the other day, uh, and there was a kiosk in the middle of the mall, and the person who's selling your products is advertises handmade at home kind of thing and the problem is is that this product number one is not labeled properly and number two just by looking at the label I know that it's not preserved properly so the fact that you took those extra steps to really understand what is required to put a safe product in the market I think is really important. Oh, I think for sure um, you know when I before I came into this handmade market, when I thought handmade, I just envisioned this messy, floppy kitchen and, you know, nothing being sanitary. So I didn't want that image to be associated with my product. Um, and so I, you know, wanted to make sure that even though it's handmade and it used to be homemade, um, that we still, you know, we want to be professional. We want to do everything the correct way because my goal is to become much bigger than where I am now and be able to scale and be in compliance. And um, I'm looking at the long-term goals. So um, even though the class was, you know, expensive and time-consuming and all of that, it was really important that we knew what we were doing and that we were doing it correctly. Right. All right. Well, we're going to take a break, and that's really a, a c- congratulations because that's the kind of thing that, that makes beauty brands um, really grow. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about the five things you need to know about bath bombs and why the candy scrub and body truffle is so special. We'll be right back. Over here, here's a secret for a virus-free computer. ESET, they've been a pioneer in the antivirus industry for over 25 years. 25 years of innovative, top-rated antivirus protection. ESET's award-winning security solutions provide a safe online experience for over 100 million home and business computer owners. They are so affordable, fast, and simple to use. So be gone, you blue screen of death. ESET's on my computer. If it's not on yours, visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on ESET now. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Now. What does HealthyLife.net and Amazon.com have in common? Well, they're both available on the Internet. They both give great value. But most important, most of our positive program hosts and guests are accomplished authors. And their books are available from, you got it, Amazon.com. Now it even gets better than that. Because when you're listening on air to a HealthyLife.net host or guest, you can go directly to Amazon.com and you can order your book while you're still listening to your favorite HealthyLife.net program. So when you hear an author you like, go to the homepage of HealthyLife.net and click on Amazon.com. Where positive people and radio unite. HealthyLife.net Hey there, welcome back. This is Patty Smucker on HealthyLife.net. You're listening to Radio AMB. And I'm here with Elisa Chu, uh, who is the founder, president, CEO, and all-around maker of uh, Bomblicity, a beautiful little line of bath, uh, hand, and and body scrubs. And um, Alyssa, can you start by telling us what are some of the important things that people should know about bath bombs? 
So bath bombs have been a big um, big hit these days. Um, more and more people are learning what bath bombs are. Um, it's something that I wanted to add to my line several years ago, but um, we were finding that a lot of people still didn't know what they were, so we kind of um, mixed that. But just last year, we finally decided to launch it as more and more people were asking us for it. So there's a lot of do-it-yourself videos on how to make bath bombs. And um, so one of the, the – I have a little blog here that tells you, like, the five um, things that you should know about uh, bath bombs. So bath bombs are um, – packed with uh, baking soda and citric acid. That is what creates that fizzing um, the reaction. And um, in our case, what we do is we actually pack them with uh, not only that, but the skin softening nutrients, um, same exact butter and oil blends as our candy scrubs. Um, that makes it for um, the really soft, skin softening, um, moisturizing effect after you come out of the bath. Um, with bath bombs, the sooner you use them, the better. You don't want them sitting around too long because they'll lose their fizziness. Um, it'll still work, but it just won't be as fun. Mm-hmm. So um, some people, you know, might save their bath bomb for several months or over a year because it's still so pretty they don't want to use it. And then when they finally use it, it's disappointing because it didn't do much. Well, that's because the humidity from our air, especially if it's, if you're, if it's sitting in your bathroom, um, it's going to kind of set off that fizzing reaction over time, and so you don't get that um, that nice um, fizz in the bath. Uh huh. Okay. Um, there are bath bombs where people are using food dyes, and you're not supposed to. Mm-hmm. Food dyes, I guess you could use it if you're using it at home and making it yourself. But if you're to sell them, that is actually not legal to be using food um, dyes in your bath bomb. So um, we use certified um, batch um, FDNC colorants, and um, they're, they basically don't stain your tub, so you don't have to um, worry about, you know, discoloring your tub or it staining your skin and things like that. Um, and then we do use an emulsifier that helps blend the different oils and the butters with the water. If we don't use an emulsifier, what happens is when you're sitting in that tub, you're going to see that greasy oil floating at the top, and that's not very pleasing. So uh, we do use the bare minimum of some emulsifiers just to help um, make the experience nicer. And, um, I, you know, it's, it's just a fun way to, you know, people, a lot of people say, I don't take baths, I only take showers, but um, I was never a big bath person either until I discovered bath bombs, and I just find that it's really relaxing sometimes. You just have to make time for yourself, even if it's 15 minutes, and um, it's a good way to make yourself um, scrub the bath at least once a week, too. Right. <laughs> a good excuse to, to, to scrub that. But I think, again, your story is so important because you did start out with a real a real problem. The hand, you know, you were washing your hands as a dental hygienist, found that you needed something that would stay with you longer. So you started this business and found that there was really an interest in it and that you went out and you got the education to learn what is the way to be able to create a safe, product that could be marketed there's so many people that are trying to market beauty products that are made at home which is a great way to sort of experiment and get a get a get a name for yourself but ultimately if you're going to market something and sell it to the consumer there are safety things that it looks like you've really taken the time to figure out and make sure that you're doing it the right way right so we um i think a lot of small makers that are out there are mostly doing it as a hobby and trying to make, you know, some size money and then hoping that it will grow. But I think what one of the problems um, that I see in that is that they don't look at these um, courses or education as an investment. Mm-hmm. They're looking at it as an expense. So, um, you know, the same with us. My husband and I had some um, disagreements in the beginning, but um, I think you know, when you look at the grand scheme of things and of where we want to go with it, we you know what, we, we have to make that investment. We have to do it right because we don't want to mess up and put all this hard, you know, throw all this hard work away. And we've already come six years into this, and now it's, you know, we just, you know, we, we are always listening to 
you know, listening to different um and, and I think the other piece of it, too, which is that um, when you are selling something to the general consumer, you, um, you take on a liability. So if you make something that isn't safe and somebody gets hurt, uh, then there is, there's, a, there's a consequence to that. But I'm so excited about the things that you've done. And, and you specifically have some, a lot of um, a passion around the candy scrubs and the body truffles. Tell us uh, what makes those really special. Okay, so they're just really cute and fun. No, no, they actually were not even supposed to look like candy. When I so basically what I wanted was um, a small, a small piece of something that I could use at work and not have to like contaminate a whole jar of scrubs. Because oh, got it. Okay. Our wet hands in the scrubs. When you get that preservative and the water balance thrown off, mm-hmm. it doesn't work anymore. It's um. You know, it's it, it growing it. So you had asked me earlier about preservatives. Um, we actually don't need to use any preservatives. First of all, our product is anhydrous, meaning there's no water in our products. So when there's no water, there there can not be anything, no life. So right. You can't get mold. You can't get bacteria. You can't get fungus and things like that. So. Um, so that's number one. And there are products out there in a jar that don't have any water in it, but you have to assume that people are going to get water in it. So that's why you should still use a preservative. Um, in our case, it's meant for just one use. Right. So you, don't, you know, once it's used, it's done. You don't have to worry about the preservative. So we don't, you know, so our products don't have any preservatives in them. Um, our scrubs are themed after candy and chocolate. Um like I said, they weren't supposed to be like chalk, uh, candy at first. I sent a bunch um, to my friend in a little plastic baggie of the little cubes, and she said, oh, they're cute. They, they worked great, but did you know they all stuck together because I had sent it in the mail? Mm-hmm. And I never thought about how the butter can, you know, soften Mel- during right. the heat. And then when they, just like chocolate, when they get back to room temperature, they can solidify again. So then I thought, oh, no, we can't sell it if it's going to be stuck. I thought we have no way of controlling the temperature like that. Um, so then I told my husband, we're going to have to wrap these individually. And he looked at me like I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I was adamant about it. I luckily, I had my mother-in-law on my side. Uh-huh. <laughs> And she said, I'll help you guys wrap them. <laughs> uh-huh. And then and the candy scrubs were born. That's great. That's great. Well, we're 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 sort of out of time, and but it's such such a pleasure. Bonblicity. Spell it for everybody. B O N B L I S S I T Y. So go to bonblicity dot com. It is the cutest brand. I love the texture and the way it feels on my skin, and so will you. So, Elisa, thanks for taking the time to be with us and tell us a little bit about your brand and your story. Thank you so much for having me. It was fun. All right, great. All right, well, that will uh, that's uh, we'll do it for this first half. Stay with us, and we will be right back with J R L Artiste. Here's the thing about beauty: it's pretty. At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. For all your live or pre-recorded webcasting needs, come to earthchannel.com. Get your web-based message out to a select group or the whole world. It's easy. A pioneer in webcasting, earthchannel.com provides the best products and services to big corporations and government users. And now, this same technology is available to you. They have the best Earthcast encoders, servers, and products to meet your technical needs. But wait, don't want to mess with technical stress? No problem. They'll do it for you. EarthChannel.com is your answer. You can use webcasting for lots of things like advertising, marketing, customer support, training, and don't forget, web radio and TV. In fact, you're listening to a live EarthCast right now. So come to EarthChannel.com. Actualize your audio or video webcasting needs today. You can't beat the friendly service or the price. 
Call earthchannel.com at 1-800-849-8978. That's 1-800-849-8978. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. To learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com, visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Hey, thanks for staying with us. This is Patty Smucker. You're listening to Radio AMB on HealthyLife.net. I am delighted, um, as I mentioned at the top of the show, to introduce you to J.R.L. Artiste. He's a celebrity makeup artist that's been experiencing success in social media as he's fine-tuned his message and his activity to start to build a real brand. So welcome, J.R. We're delighted to have you with us. Hi, how are you guys? Thank you for having me. What an honor. So, JR, tell us a little bit about your background. What, how, did you, uh, how did you get started working as a celebrity makeup artist? You know, this all happened about, it's been about three years. I've um, stopped working at Sephora, which is where I pretty much learned how to um, master my craft. Mm-hmm. You know, and by master my craft, it's meaning like, what works best for me, my ins and outs of beauty, and the true meaning of beauty behind myself and what I believe in. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing this for 10 years, uh-huh. five years professionally, and that just goes into what I just said, you know, Sephora really um, giving me the opportunity to grow with my artistry. And when you when you um, started doing makeup, um, what because you, you said you were doing that t- for ten uh, ten years, what was it that got you into doing that? You know, I knew that school wasn't wasn't for me right away. Um, I knew that um, I had an eye for beauty since I was a young child. You know, I would always play with my mom's cosmetics. <laughs> <laughs> And so I got caught. Uh-huh. <laughs> and as time went on, um, I used to be in, I was always that kid behind the scenes because I was always too shy to be in front of cameras. Mm-hmm. So I would always help the girls get ready when we had productions and school, which is whether it was the dance team, whether it was a, a play, drama, any type of event behind the scenes, I was there helping girls get ready, doing their hair, their makeup. And it just followed through the end of me of high school, my high school years, where you know, um, straight out of high school, within a year or so, I decided to join cosmetology school. And and so in high at the at the very end of high school, you went to beauty school. Yes, I went to beauty school um, to explore my creativity as an art in a, as an art artist. Uh huh. I knew that at a young age, I wanted to be an entertainer and something artistic, but. It never really, I never really put well thought into what uh-huh. I just knew. I know somewhere somehow I'm going to be part of this industry. <laughs> right. And so, um, but I understand that uh, beauty school wasn't necessarily the the path that you went. No, um, I didn't finish due to health reasons. Uh huh. Um, I had to like discontinue school at the moment. Um, so I took that time to just regroup and find out what it is that I wanted to do, and as time went on, I um, I used to use my best friend as my guinea pig, and, you know, we tried different looks. Every time she had an event to go to, whether it was a family party, an event, a club night, I was her makeup artist. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we had, our, we had our, our moments, you know, where it wasn't the best, 
um, and we've had our moments where we were we had great moments. It was like, wow, like you have elevated yourself. What, where are you going to school? But there really was no school uh-huh. for me. Um, my skills just, you know, by practicing through time. And that's pretty much how I went forth about it. Um, and that's where it led me up to, you know, working at Sephora. And so at Sephora, so as you have looked at this and as, as you've gone through this career process, um, would you say that there were some key steps that changed your career to sort of change the, the, the success that you're having today? Yes. Um, I definitely started looking more more on the business aspect side of it mm-hmm. and, and thinking, well, I don't just want to do makeup my whole life just, just to do makeup. I want to be an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to build my brand. I want to build as much as I can and invest. Investment is good. And friends would tell me, what are you doing with your, you know, social media? How come you don't, you have such a good following going? Why aren't you just making your business page? And, you know, I started looking at it on that end. And sure enough, um, my Instagram started growing even more because it started catering to an audience where it wasn't just about myself. It was also about beauty and, and really helping people find, um, that perfect product or whatever works for them as far as skin type and different looks and bookings. And that's pretty much where I started seeing the change because people were hitting me up for makeup and I was like, wow, this is, this is the perfect platform to, to change that. So the first sort of first step then was beginning to really look at it as a business. When you were with Sephora, was there some various different things that in at that three year junction gave you some tools to really be able to start plugging in the business concepts? Yes, I wasn't getting what I wanted from Sephora. They were not sending me to any special training or anything that was making me grow. Mm -hmm. So I started using my social media platform to help me grow. Mm -hmm. And that's that's where I think it it niched me to to start learning the business side of of it and and make myself grow outside of Sephora Mm -hmm. so that I can continue with, you know, greater success. And so at Sephora, what were some of the tools that you did get from them? I did gain a lot of experience through um, the senior artists, working mm-hmm. with different clients, different skin types, different ethnicities, different um, scenarios with different uh, catering to different needs of every everybody's different. Yeah, so getting that experience to a, lo- a larger, uh, more diverse audience of faces to work with and, and products to work with. Yes, correct. Yeah. Especially the product knowledge. The product knowledge is very important because you are applying these products to these um, clients, you know, face, and you kind of have to understand the different skin types. Some people have sensitive skin, some don't. What works for, for some don't work for others. So it's pretty much, you know, narrowing it down to what works best for that client. And at, if anything, you know, even for yourself. Right. Right. And now, I know that um, you actually got started developing a really great reputation at Sephora, so people were really disappointed when they came in and you weren't the one that was going to be doing their makeup. Yes. <laughs> um, I, my whole thing is, is building a client relationship, and it was a key. That was one of the major keys that they pointed out to us. Build a relationship with your clients because they're gonna, those are the ones going to make your sales. <laughs> those are the ones that are going to come back and say, hey, so-and-so helped me. I really like them. I want them. And just just the way it works, you know, um, Sephora, with Sephora, I mean, it goes based off scheduling. So maybe I was there, but I wasn't available. And if my client was waiting for me, either she waited. And sadly so, I don't like waking my, making my clients wait. Right. So unfortunately, sometimes I, was, I couldn't assist them. And it, and it hurt me so much because I knew how much they appreciated me. Right, exactly. All right, well, we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about what it means to JR to be building his personal brand and also some of the steps he's taking to grow his social media audience. So stay with us. We will be right back. Here's the thing about beauty. It's pretty. 
At AmericanMadeBeauty.com, we're all about the pretty, making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine. We have essentially everything you need, and AmericanMadeBeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the U.S. of A. Imagine everything you need from the best hair, skin, and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at AmericanMadeBeauty.com. We also think you're pretty important, so visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Browse, buy, learn. AmericanMadeBeauty.com. When you're looking for bedding, department store prices can shock you. Well, be shocked no more. Sell steak cheap, not cheap steak. That's the motto of Anna's Linens. Although they don't sell steak, they do sell the best bedding, bath, and home decor items. They strive to provide their merchandise at extreme value to their customers, and they do it. Great everyday prices on everything and military discounts. Plus, if you visit them online, they have clearance items and Internet specials. Visit them online now at HealthyLife.net's advertiser page. We're looking for a few good American beauty manufacturers who want to increase their brand in an exclusive credentialed category. If you're an American company who has conceived, designed, and bottled brands that are all about pretty, then we're pretty sure we're talking about you. And we're pretty sure you should be on AmericanMadeBeauty.com. This beauty website focuses on entrepreneurs and beauty startups as well as established brands. If it's pretty, we want to see it, and we want to sell it on AmericanMadeBeauty.com to learn how you can be part of AmericanMadeBeauty.com. Visit AmericanMadeBeauty.com now. Oh, man, it never fails. My suitcase just got ripped apart. Life is a journey. Make it a pleasant one. You Samsonite. You know the name. For almost a century, Samsonite luggage has proved itself to be the worldwide leader in innovative travel solutions. Let it be yours. Visit HealthyLife.net's affiliate Samsonite on our homepage and click to look at the fine luggage from suitcases to golf travel bags. And don't forget... Take a look at their travel accessories. Make life a journey, a pleasant one, with Samsonite. HealthyLife.net, where positive overcomes negative. This is Patty Smucker on Radio AMB, and you're listening to us on HealthyLife.net. I'm here with J.R. L. Artiste. He is an up-and-coming uh, celebrity makeup artist as well as a social media influencer. Uh, and we've been talking a little bit about how he made sort of a shift when he was uh, in the uh, tenth year of his career. Um, JR, tell us a little bit about what it meant for you to build a personal brand. It means a lot for me because I'm being requested um, sometimes at the same uh, different places and at the same time and I wish there was more of me, but there isn't. So me building my brand is what's going to allow me to um, be able to handle that more in a professional manner and, and be able to cater to, to everybody. Right. And so what have been some of the things that you've done to build what you consider to be your personal brand? For me, I pretty much have thought this out on my own personally. Um what I do, what I can say is I've had, I've had the opportunity to create a, I'm starting to create a team, which is going to help me get to the next level and making my brand come true. Mm-hmm. Um, some of the steps has just been, you know, changing my strategies on social media, um, reaching out to brands, networking. Networking is a big, important um, uh, key in, in this industry because um, that's how you meet different people, different other influencers different brands that may want to make you an ambassador or, you know, make you a part of their line, stuff like that. It's really important so that you can, you know, once you have those connections, you can build your brand as well. Now, networking, um, was that something that came really easy for you to get out and start doing the networking? No, it really didn't. And (laughs) sadly so, um, I know a few people in the industry and, Although, you know, when it comes to the industry, everybody has their, their like, how do I say this? Um, they pick and choose who they want to, you know, bring along. Mm-hmm. I did have, you know, an opportunity with a friend before. But um, this industry is very cutthroat, and at the end of the day, everyone's in it for themselves, uh-huh. unfortunately. So you kind of have to maneuver your way in there. It, it wasn't easy stepping into such a big platform of, influencers and newcomers versus me that I've been in the game for 10 years, you know, um, 
where I may not have as much following, but I've had the experience, you know, versus Insta fame. And it, it wasn't easy. It was a bit intimidating at first because people don't, you don't have like X amount of followers, you know, you're, you're pretty much nothing to them. Uh huh. And so how do you, how did you, over, how did you overcome that? How do you get past all that? You know, well, for me, it's not even about followers. It's about experience. Mm -hmm. I appreciate all my following. I appreciate everybody who supports me. But at the end of the day, it comes all down to experience. You can have the following you want. And at that, at that, if they're even organic followers. But, I mean, experience is what really comes to take into place because if you're going to get booked, people want to have that, that um, understanding that you have experience. Right. And so do, when you um, f find yourself in a situation where you know you have to go out and network with people, is there, um, is, what, do you, what do you do to build up that, that courage? And, and what, how do you go about meeting people that you don't otherwise know? I, I literally walk into the events and I introduce myself. I'm always like the life of the party, smiling. Whether people want to say hi or not, I, I still welcome everybody. I think that and as long as I do my part, you know, God, God will take care of the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And just like you said, you know, getting out there. I, and I know it's difficult for a lot of young people that that whole concept of extending yourself and being out there. But I really love the idea that for me personally, I, I would say I'm the master at networking. I, but I, I've, I've done it for so many years. And I think for me, it's about being just genuinely curious, like going into a room and just looking around the room and, um, you know, just finding something somebody that just looks interesting and going up and sticking my hand out and saying, hi, how are you? I notice, boom. And it just starts a conversation, and particularly if it's something about that other individual. I've met some really great people, as a matter of fact, you know. I have, um, if I may, you know, shout out a few people. Um, I have my uh, freelance MUA um, family, which is a makeup mobile service app uh -huh. up and running. It's on the Android and um Apple Network, um, I mean, what is it called? The Apple Store and um, Android Store. Uh huh. It's uh, good for anybody who's a part of the beauty industry. They really, you know, sign up, and you're pretty much a beauty service, uh, a beauty mobile service app on the go. And what is it called? It's called Freelance MUA. Okay. And there have been really good people to me from day one. They mm -hmm. believe in me. They believe in the, the, the dream. Um, recently, they invited me to be a part of Fame Expo, which is a huge uh, makeup expo, which was my first time attending. Uh -huh. So I really appreciate that. And, and it's all networking. This is a, a people that really believe in me and that have helped me along the way as well. Right. As well as my um, BFG Cosmetics family, who has assisted me and, and gifted me um, makeup makeup for my clients and it's beautiful makeup all the way from Canada. Uh huh. That's Very great. Clean and everything. That's um, so building building those relationships has been uh been really key. Tell us about what you've done in terms of building your social media following. You know, uh, um building your social media following has a lot to do with following um also accounts that are compromisable to your your account, your business. So if I'm beauty cosmetics and care you know, following Mac Cosmetics, all the high-end brands, um, following different influencers, hashtagging um, some of the top beauty um, hashtags, you know, so that people can see your work. And that... And, um, just really networking also, you know. Networking in the virtual world. <laughs> Yes. 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 That's great. So, where do you go from here? What What lies ahead? What are your, some of your goals uh, that you would like to uh, try and accomplish in the next year or so? Um, within the next year, it will be my my dirty thirty, <laughs> my thirtieth birthday, and I I plan and I'm putting this forward to um like within this time frame. Um, I want to expand my brand. I want to make it known. I want to have a grand, you know, release party with my birthday, per se, to introduce my brand to the world and just take it take it on from there and introduce my brand, my management team behind it. Um, it's not easy doing it alone. Mm -hmm. So 
it's you know you got to find the right people and and of course with the right people anything is possible right and also you know what's meant for you is meant for you as well is the way i see it so i'm going to put my foot forward and and do my best to bring this brand to life and worldwide you know and um make it very successful and it's not just for myself it's to empower others as well there's not a lot of empowerment being pushed in the beauty industry it's too competitive well, thank you. Thanks for taking the time to share with us a little bit about your journey, and um, congratulations for the success that you've already achieved uh, and for being an inspiration for some of these um, people who are looking to make a career in uh, becoming an influencer and, and, and finding their passion. So thanks for taking some time with us today. Well, no, thank you so much. It was a truly honor, my first interview ever, so I really appreciate it, and I am humbled and thankful for this opportunity. Great. Well, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for being here with us. Uh, check in with us next week uh, when we um, take some time to talk about wellness and what are some of the key factors that are going on in the wellness industry and things you should be doing to make sure that you're living a long and vibrant life. I'm Patty Smucker. Thanks for listening to Radio A and B, where we think pretty is pretty important in all things in beauty. the thing about beauty it's pretty at americanmadebeauty.com we're all about the pretty making it easier for you to find what makes your beauty shine we have essentially everything you need and americanmadebeauty.com celebrates brands that were created right here in the u.s of a imagine everything you need from the best hair skin and nail products to makeup and even the tools because it's all about pretty at americanmadebeauty.com we also think you're pretty important so visit americanmadebeauty.com browse buy learn americanmadebeauty.com Obstacle racing. You know you want to try it. Well, try Reebok Spartan Race, the global leader in obstacle racing. With four different race levels, their goal is to get you up off the couch and throw you into the mud and on the trails to give you the adrenaline rush of your life. Obstacle courses are designed to test your resilience, strength, stamina, quick decision-making skills, and give you the ability to laugh in the face of adversity. Visit HealthyLife.net advertiser page and click on Spartan Race. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network.